And this video is going to show you exactly how you can preview a file or a document stored within your own Bubble database. Now, one thing I should just highlight is that previewing a file is different from downloading a file. By this point in time, you've probably found that whenever a user tries to open up a document inside of your database, it'll automatically download that. Whereas today, we're here to focus on how you can actually just preview that. So how you can display that file in something like a pop-up. Now look, there is a little bit involved within this process, but of course, it's nothing that we can't handle inside of Bubble. So what I'm gonna do is hand this one over to Luca, and he's gonna walk through everything you need to know in as much detail as possible. Hello, Luca here. Today we're gonna to be going over how to add PDFs to your Bubble application, and more specifically, how to let users upload PDFs and then for other users to view those PDFs without having to download them onto their laptop. Some real world applications for this may be viewing an invoice sent by a user or even uploading a CV on a jobs posting boards kind of application. Today I've set up the jobs posting board so you can upload and view your CV. So that's the use case we're gonna be going over today. So let's jump into our preview that we've got set up here. So if we go over to our CV, a user would download their CV as a PDF document for the upload, and they would go onto the Bubble application, click the upload button, and open that in here. Then they would click the upload, they'd get sent to their page, and then they can view this within their Bubble application. So if, for example, someone was going to hire them, they can click this and then be sent straight to the PDF without actually having to download that onto their computer like we just did to actually upload the PDF. Let's jump into the bubble as to show you how this works. So the first thing we're going to build out is the ability for users to be able to upload a file into our bubble database. So we're gonna to wanna to have a page on your bubble application where there is a button which will trigger this workflow. And to actually get that file downloaded, we wanna have one of these file uploaders, which is under the input forms tab. If we drag that onto the section of your page where you'd like it to show up, I'm just gonna format this by unchecking and make this fixed width so it expands to within my group. But that's all we kind of need to get started with this. You just need a file uploader and a button to be able to upload that file to the bubble database. So once you've got your file uploader on your page and you've got a button, what you'd want to do is jump into the workflows for that button. Now, what we're going to want to do is actually make changes to the current user. And then we're going to want to send our users to their page to be able to view what they've just uploaded. Now, the change we're making to the current user is just the uploaded file is going to be uploaded to a file attribute on their profile uh, called MyCV. So if we click onto that action there, we're going to change a field. We're going to create a new field for our PDF. So this is going to be my CV and the field type is going to be a file and we're going to click create. Now that file that's going to be stored underneath the user is going to be the CV. So we're going to want the value from the file uploader that we've put onto our page. So now every time someone clicks that button, it's going to update the my CV file attribute under the current user to be that file that's been uploaded under the file uploader that we've added to our page before. And then after that's been uploaded, we're getting sent to our index page. So if you go to your user page or where your users will be viewing, once you've added the ability for your users to be able to upload their PDF, you're gonna to wanna to move over and create a page where other users or the user will be able to view their PDF. Now you're gonna want a button on this page to trigger a workflow because the workflow is gonna enable a pop-up to appear and that pop-up's gonna have a little piece of HTML in which enables our users to be able to view that PDF. So 
what we're going to want to do is click on that button and start our workflow. Now we want our workflow to show this pop up. So we're going to type in show an element. And once we've clicked that, we're going to move back over to our design tab and place our pop up on our page. So you're going to want to go to containers and drag the pop up to anywhere on the page. Now we're going to want to actually add our piece of HTML into our pop up. So the HTML is the visual elements in the HTML. And we're going to want to drag that onto our pop up. Now at the moment, our pop up has no layout. So we'll be able to move this anywhere within our pop up. We actually want to set this container layout to be a column. So if we go to layout, it's on fix at the moment. And as you can see, once we click column, this pulls it into the top corner. Now, if we click onto our HTML element again, and we uncheck make this element's fixed width, it's going to expand the full extent of our pop-up. And if we do the same for our height, we'll get rid of all of that there. Perfect. Now, this is basically going to expand fully to the extent of our pop-up. Now we want our pop-up to actually be as big as the PDF is, and we don't want it to be fixed to a very small area within our screen. So we're gonna, again, uncheck, make this element fixed width, and we're gonna do the same for this, except instead of it being minimum width and minimum height, we're gonna set maximum width and maximum height. So if a PDF is really big, it can be really big, but then if it's slightly smaller, it will then hug the HTML or the PDF. So if we get rid of this and we get rid of that. What I'm going to do is say the max width will be 400 or let's go 600. The max height will say 800. Perfect. Now we're going to leave that as so. Now, we're going to add in a piece of our HTML here, and this will be available in the description. So you don't need to worry about having to type it out. So I'm going to quickly go and grab this piece of HTML code. Now, now the specific HTML code we're using is actually an iframe. And an iframe is basically the same as if you're just opening up a new tab within a browser. So the tab that we're going to open up is going to be the exact height and width of our pop-up element. And it's going to be within our bubble application instead of just opening up a new Chrome tab. It's going to open up our pop-up and that's going to be able to view our PDF within it. So if we copy this code, as I said, this will be in the description. We'll move over to our HTML element. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to paste in that. Now we want our URL for the file that we've uploaded into our whole database to be after the HTTPS slash slash. And we're going to want to insert this as a dynamic data because we're using data that's stored in our mobile database. And this will be the current user, or you could do the current page user. But for this example, we'll be doing the current user and we've called that my CV and it's going to be my CV's URL. Sweet. So now we've put our piece of HTML iframe code into our pop up. What we're going to do, what I do now, the last step is we're going to want this button to show our pop up. So we're going to do start on edit workflow. We've already added the shown element, but now we've got the pop up with our HTML code to be able to show. So if we exit off that, we want to preview our, our application now. And let's go and upload a PDF. We'll use a different PDF this time so we can see that what we've done has worked. Click upload, perfect. We're going to want to click our button. And as you can see, we've got a brand new PDF that has been revealed to us. So that's how you add a PDF into your bubble application and enable users to be able to show that PDF without the user having to download it to their computer. And just like that, you now know how you can display a preview of a file or a document stored within your own bubble database.
Look, if you found this video useful and you wanted to stay up to date with any additional bubble resources I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. For now though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this full video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.